He says, the Bible is the word of God. Every word in the Bible is true. And he goes for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Every word is the word of God and it's Mm -hmm. true and the Bible is the... Then he remembers his manners and he says, oh, I'm sorry, Uh, what is your relationship with the Bible? So I said, my relationship? (laughs) Good word. You're talking to the high priest. Aaron (laughs) is my grandfather, which means that Moses is my uncle and Miriam is my aunt. His mouth fell open. He mumbled something and he walked away. Mm. You know? Now, Ishmael comes along and says, exactly, you can only inherit and we inherit. The land is ours by inheritance. And that's why you can't ask them, well, where were you a hundred years ago? It doesn't matter. Inheritance is automatic. Did we have a government a hundred years ago? It doesn't matter. It's our land. Now you come and you say, we have a solution to the problem. We will give you half the land. Who are you talking to? They're so offended. You're giving me half of my land? Two-state solution? Are you, you think you're talking to Esav? You're talking to Yishmael who bows to God five times a day and believes to the point of sacrificing their lives that they inherit the land because they are Ishmael's descendants and Ishmael is the older son. This explains everything. Why all the negotiations for all the years haven't made a dent because you're not communicating. They believe the land is theirs by inheritance, and you say we have a right to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. This is not a rational conversation. Mm. Talking cross purposes, of course. And that's how it feels to to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And even if you say, don't start up with us, we have a better army, we have nuclear weapons, Uh, (laughs) don't start up with us, we'll beat you up. Yeah, you can beat us up, it's still our land. So if this is an inheritance dispute rooted in deep theological roots, back to the beginning, is the only solution victory, conclusive victory? I mean, we have an inheritance dispute. How do you resolve that? Exactly right. Lawyers. <laughs> what lawyers. are we saying to that? <clears throat> but listen to how this makes sense. Why is a Jewish baby a threat? Hmm another inheritor another heir because one baby can inherit the whole thing so i said why are you killing babies they're not your <coughs> enemy yes mm. they are mm. they're not asav's enemy asav is not threatened by a baby Wait, you're talking about why they feel threatened by jewish babies yeah, yeah. Mm. And, wh- and why don't we and also that's why they have to wipe out all jews mm-hmm. Asaph never wanted to do that. Right. I guess, yeah, I want to absorb all that for a second. I am sensitive now. Do you acknowledge how significant it is that Asaph and sort of the, the Christian world has basically made peace with, in, in its current modern state, with the Jews, this Judeo Christian alliance that has formed in the modern world? I'm very grateful for. And I'm seeing it fracture in, in very recent times. You're starting to see wedge issues, especially if you follow any of the media, social media, Daily Wire, uh, Tucker Carlson, stuff that's going on in new media. They're trying to drive a wedge between Christians and Jews, which to me feels very ancient and very troublesome and disheartening. So anything talking about that, that I, I, I'm not trying to be super sensitive to it, but I want to acknowledge where, where things were, crusades. Uh, conquering Rome versus where they are now. Do you acknowledge that too? As Much like, better. Yeah. Well, As like, no, well, like we're enemies, we all acknowledge the history of that. No longer. Well, now there is this alliance. And some people talk about, well, evangelicals have a different agenda, but I appreciate the support. Well, we'll figure it out when we get there. What changed? Why, why did they give up? Yeah, what? Th- there's nothing they need from us. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What did they need they before? Well, the Crusades, they wanted the land. Uh 
And in the Inquisition, they wanted us converted, okay. not dead. So Christianity never wanted to eliminate Jews, because then who are they going to convert? Right. <laughs> right. To just conquer them. To, conquer, to dominate them. Conquer, dominate. Well, yeah, but they, you know, to accept the whole issue of, uh, of rejectors of, of Jesus. That was the whole crux of right. Christian replacement theology or, or deep-rooted Christian anti-Semitism. But I'm just noting— But again, not genocidal. Right, but I'm also noting that this was historically the issue, and thank God now we've had a very good, and certainly post, uh, I don't know where it's going, but certainly post uh, uh, Nazi Germany and, and in the modern day, there has been a very healthy respect between evangelicals and Jews, Catholics, uh, and generally the Judeo-Christian um, alliance, I would say, uh, a respect. <laughs> And yeah. I would love we had a we had a, someone on from Syria, <coughs> that, and there'd be no, I'd love nothing better than for Muslims and Jews to to reach that kind of place okay. communally, which seems to make sense given how much we have in common. Like you said, in terms of practice, ritual, there's so much in common with uh, a religious Muslim and a religious Jew. It seems so strange that these cousins would not find common ground because inheritance. We dispute. want the same thing. Yeah. The Christians don't want the same thing. They have Rome and they're happy. We need, we need to realize who we're dealing with mm -hmm. and what we're dealing with. So all this, we'll, we'll destroy Hamas. So what? It may, it'll make no dent in their mentality. And what about, what about the argument of, that we have peace with Jordan and Egypt? We've been able to do this before and a, an alliance or a peaceful uh, peace on the horizon with some of the Arab world, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates. Uh, you know, when we made peace with Egypt, mm -hmm. Sadat, interviewed by Barbara Walters, <laughs> mm -hmm. actually said, we are now at peace, mm -hmm. but if our brother Arabs go to war, we're going to have to and, join them. And by so the way, what's your and, take on your peace with and, uh, Israel right now, Sadat? <laughs> Sorry, I never do Barbara Walters. but That's pretty good. Th th there's peace, but they also, one of the reasons Egypt didn't want Israel going into Rafah is because they just discovered a ton of tunnels that the Egyptian kind of rulership has the corrupt rulership has been. Has I'm not created. acknowledging. Tr I'm not saying there should be full trust, but I am acknowledging that there's been a slight difference in Israel's uh, direct enemies with Iran, Hamas, and Hezbollah versus Jordan and Egypt. Are you saying it's not significant, or, or it it's useful? Mm -hmm. But first of all, it came as a result of defeating them, mm -hmm. not appeasing of course, them. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But ideologically, nothing has changed. What about the leadership in Saudi Arabia that you've seen speak out against Qatar, against that they allow radical extremist elements into their society and Abrahamic Accords, things like that? I think there is a shift happening mm -hmm. in their beliefs. There are millions of Muslims who no longer believe that if you can kill successfully, God is on your side. That's good. That mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Food for thought, Michael, right? I was sitting in the airport uh -huh. years ago. This guy comes over, and without a hello and without a, he launches into a sermon. <laughs> he's a missionary, uh -huh. and oh, he's, he's with the wrong guy. <laughs> he's smuggling Bibles. <laughs> he's about now into uh -huh. Haiti. Okay, and he comes over and tells me, well, "I'm smuggling." <laughs> First of all, why do you have to smuggle? <laughs> it's more fun. Well, it's illegal to bring Bibles into yeah. Haiti. But this is what he says. He says, the Bible is the word of God. Every word in the Bible is true. And he goes, oh, for about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you can't dispute, disprove it, you can't dispute it. Every word is the word of God, and it's mm -hmm. true, and the Bible is the... Then he remembers his manners, and he says... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what is your relationship with the Bible? I so, like the first part. <laughs> so I'm a coin. Mm. Oh. So I said, my relationship? <laughs> Good word. You're talking to the high priest. Aaron <laughs> is my grandfather, which means that Moses is my uncle, and Miriam is my aunt. His mouth fell open. <laughs> he, he was... He mumbled something and he walked away. Mm. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, 
Didn't got a, he, and got a bris. Yeah. Didn't he <laughs> just didn't he just finish telling me that every word in the Bible is true? Mm-hmm. Why was he so shocked? Right? That you believe in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So there was an Aaron who had a brother Moses, who had a sister Miriam, and he has children, and I'm one of his children. Shocked. Huh. If we just told the truth. Right. Mm. You, you want to talk about our relationship with the Bible? We are biological descendants. We are the children of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs. And there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us. Take a look. Click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best. And join us for some enjoyable conversation.